Welcome to episode two of Dialing an Espresso. Now this is a series where I take a coffee and I walk you through the steps that I go through when I'm dialing in an espresso. Talk about what I'm tasting and how I might change my recipe or technique based on what I'm tasting to get a better tasting shot. This series is kind of controlled by the top tier of my Patreon supporters. They get a poll to pick which machine I'm gonna use, which grinder I'm gonna use, and then one of them gets to pick which coffee I'm gonna use. So uh, machine-wise, they picked the Sage or the Breville Dual Boiler. They picked the Niche Zero Grinder. And Samuel picked a rather interesting coffee. And I like this because it may not be something that I would have picked on my own, which is kind of the point. Now this is a UK roaster. They're called Darkwoods Coffee. And this is a barrel-aged espresso. So I think the raw coffee, it's a washed Ethiopian coffee, has been aged in bourbon barrels and then roasted. I wouldn't have picked that. It's not that I wouldn't think I'd like it, it's just not something I would have picked. Let's have a little look inside. The roast level on the little card on the front, that says medium. Uh, one person's medium is not the same as another person's medium, though, so let's have a little inspection. Okay. This is, oh wow, that smell. There's like a ton of vanilla came off that. Okay, this is gonna be interesting. This is definitely what I would call medium. It's by no means dark. It's not super, super light. It's nicely developed. I don't think it's gonna be a difficult coffee to extract but I'm gonna be sensible in terms of my recipes. Very light roasted coffees, you'd probably wanna start with a lower dose. Very dark roasted coffees, I'd lean towards a much higher dose. Uh, and it's to do with how easy they are to extract. So this, somewhere in the middle. I'm gonna start with a 19 gram dose and go from there. So the way that this machine works is actually not how I want to work. It has two presets and these actually work on time. And I wanna go a different way. So I'm gonna start with a recipe. I'm gonna use 19 grams in. I'm gonna to aim to get 40 grams out and I'm gonna time how long that takes and use that information to adjust my grind setting. Now I don't actually know what I last used this grinder for. I don't really know where the grind setting is. We could be miles away. Today's tamper of choice is the commemorative 2007 World Barista Championship, Reg Barber Edition, tamper. So like I said, I have no idea how this is gonna flow. I get a nice time display here. So I'm just gonna brew till I get about 40 grams out. Now what's not usually helpful in these videos is when the, the grinder's just fine right from the get-go. But let's not presume everything is perfect. Because timing wise, 28, 30 seconds is probably where I'd want to go and, and we've just nailed it straight out of the gate, which is not helpful. We can tweak and we can play. So I need a teaspoon because we've got to stir. We know we have to stir. Wow. This is, it's a washed Ethiopian coffee, but you can really tell something has happened to it here in that aging process. There's some good stuff here. There's some not so good stuff here definitely need to tweak and improve this recipe. So even though it was kind of roughly where you wanted it to be, it's a little harsh, and it almost has this kind of roastiness that it shouldn't have. It's Now this is by no means a roasty coffee, but there is a certain sort of bitterness that comes, and I think that's primarily down to temperature in this case. I think we're brewing a little bit too hot. Now this thing is currently set to 95 degrees Celsius, which actually works really well with pretty light espresso roasts. This is just that little bit more developed and I think it needs to come down at least a couple of degrees. No matter how stable your coffee machine is, I would recommend making a change of at least one degree Celsius or two degrees Fahrenheit. You need a decent change to really, really taste it, uh, in my opinion. So I'm actually gonna drop this two degrees Celsius. I'll take this down to 95, which is pretty easy to do in this thing. There we go. Now that'll take a moment because coffee machines are designed really to keep the heat. You know what I mean? They're supposed to be stable. So this won't naturally want to cool down very well. I'm gonna run some water through it. Clean up my mess. Now the temperature alone isn't enough of an adjustment. I actually wanna bring that ratio down a little bit. I was like 19 to 40, 41 in that shot. 
I'm gonna go a little bit finer actually, just a little bit, maybe one step on here. So a very small adjustment, same dose in, 19 in, but maybe more like 36 to 38, more of a, a kind of classic two to one ratio at that slightly lower temperature. I think that's gonna help improve the texture a little bit more. I don't think I'm gonna sacrifice any extraction and I think it's gonna clean up that kind of harsher, more kind of bitter note at the back of that shot. What we aimed for, we got, which is 19 in, 38 out. Took us about 30 seconds, so not much change in time. So we shouldn't have sacrificed extraction because we went a little bit finer, right? But hopefully that lower temperature and that slightly shorter brew ratio should just clean up that finish a little bit. This is a really interesting espresso. Um, the aromatics are really interesting. It doesn't have that kind of agey unpleasantness that I would associate with anything that's described as age. Uh, it's really vanillary and a little bit bourbony. Oh, yeah, that's much better. Nice and sweet. Tons of sweetness in this, actually. We're at the upper tier of extraction in terms of what I'd want from this. I wouldn't say it's particularly bitter. There's nice fruit in it. Loads of texture. Really lovely texture. For a washed Ethiopian coffee, that may not be something you would expect, like a ton of nice texture, but it's roasted in a way that it's given itself up very easily. You know, there's not a lot that I would change about that. I think that is really super delicious. I think you could, if you wanted to, pull that even shorter. I think if you wanted a little bit more zip and zing to it, you could pull that just fractionally shorter, maybe like 35, 36. So slightly less than a two to one. You'd get a ton more texture and a little bit more acidity, I think. So to wrap it up, let's do that. So in this case, I'm not gonna change the grind. All I'm gonna do essentially is stop that shot a little bit earlier, see where we go. Now to make this espresso, extra delicious, I'm going to be using this cup, uh, which is something that we've made that I'll tell you about afterwards, but you know, it's guaranteed to make your espresso 10% more tasty. N not a guarantee. So that was it, like two seconds faster, two grams less. That is delicious. I think that's a really good interpretation of what was in the bag and, and what I might have expected from it. I'll leave a link to, to them in the description down below. Uh, I know the people behind this, they're, they're lovely people. Now quickly, a lot of people in the previous video complained that I used a lot of coffee. Well, in this setup, I've used 60 grams to dial in from this 250 gram bag. So I've got 190 grams left, 10 more doubles if I want it. So, you know, you don't have to be wasteful. This is kind of a nice setup for dialing in quite carefully without much waste because you don't really need to purge this. So just about the cup. This is part of the tens, hundreds, thousands project where we create limited edition things. We worked with an artist uh, called Maggie Chang and uh, we gave her like a spreadsheet that had 52 cells that each had a color representing coffee's color in its sort of flower to cup journey. And that was all we sent her. And she transformed that into this cup where you have these icons and colors around the cup as you go from flower all the way to cup on the other side. And actually the source is pretty cool because you have like a key to the symbols on the saucer as well. Uh, we have a pretty small run of these. We work with Loveramics. Um, that's pretty much their smallest possible print run. Uh, when they're gone, they're gone. There's a link in the description down below. Thank you again to all of my Patreon supporters for picking the kit, for picking the coffee. Samuel, if you're watching this, send me your address because I'm going to send you a cup. There'll be another episode next month, another different coffee, another different setup. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you have a great day.